Welcome to We Love to Hate Everything. I'm Jody, and along with my long distance bestie Amanda, we live to break down all the things we love to hate. Each week, we scour TV, TikTok, and pop culture and deliver you our unfiltered, snarky takes on everything. Take a moment to subscribe on YouTube so you catch all our live streams and shows, and follow the links in the banner to subscribe to our free weekly podcast and two Patreon shows, We Love to Hate TV and Total Request Podcast where you request the shows and we break them down. Once subscribed, you have instant access to our massive library of hundreds of past shows and recaps. We promise you'll love it. And listen, we're all friends here, so let us hear from you in the comments. We love getting to know you and we hope you enjoy the show. All right, let's go. Oh, let me take that off. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey, da, na, 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 na. Da, na, 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 na. don't worry. YouTube is not going to notice what song <laughs> that is. And I was just, she has, to say. She, the woman sings the words in the very last like moments of the series. It's like, if what doesn't kill us is making us stronger, Ooh. we're going to last longer. But they only sing it. She only sings it like right when Roseanne's like, Dan died. The end. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. But then the Connors, he's alive. Yeah, they like, well, yeah, they like uncanonized the last season or something. Uh, they did it with Will and Grace, too. But actually, the Will and Grace one was funnier because it just has Karen waking up from like a drunken stupor. So the whole like last few things of uh, seasons of Will and Grace was just her like drunk dream got it got which i it. think is good <laughs> okay well hey speaking of um other tv shows what do we have coming up in the lineup our housekeeping here yeah see guys we're still kind of like learning the uh the treads of the the sticks mm. of uh this of having like a regular youtube channel that isn't the lives so we're mm. gonna try to remember to tell you what's going on on all of our other stuff. But if you're watching here, you're either on our YouTube channel or on our Patreon at tier one or, or TRP. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't need to subscribe to both. Just please know that. Do not subscribe to both because if you're on Patreon already, you can watch the video over there. But on tier two, you're on tier one right now. Tier two, what do we have coming up, Jody? Oh my goodness. We have Sister Wives season 10, episode six, baby sister is born, fart one of uh two poo parts uh, poo farts <laughs> fart poo is next week fart poo is next week right and now this is going to be um the the splash zone episode where ape Wo, the midwife gets a little mm -hmm. all over all the way down her chest and vagina daddy's right in there with that Oh, he's got the camera right up in there. The lens, the lens cap has like all those little like watermarks on it. Oh, I thought you were going to say is used to like measure the dilation because it's just Ew. right up in there. Yeah. Right up in there. Mm. Uh, but that's what we have coming going on over on Tier Tom. Also, really quickly, we finally got our shiz together and uh, decided on a time for 420 this was jody's idea freaking pothead mcgee over here <laughs> oh i know i God, you, you guys uh don't mean to brag but i do have some She's edibles 2.5 milligrams oh I know. I know. things are getting crazy i know it's like uh that 70s show over here um so yes for our fourth annual 420 episode is going to be on wait for it 420 at 420 p.m. Central Standard. Now, Erica um, from Surreality Pod and, you know, I mean, everywhere, Justine, Erica, you know, one and the same. Uh, she noted that that is a palindrome, 420, and it's 2024. Oh my god. Fours and twos and zeros. How perfect is that? Yeah. Yeah. So join us, guys. It'll be live, but it's an unlisted link. So to get that link, you just need to join literally any tier of any of our patrons. You can join Surreality's uh, Patreon. You can do Pod in the City. Just the link will be on there pinned to the top, but you just it's have to be. Everywhere. 
it has to be behind a paywall of some kind, but just mm -hmm. join at the lowest tier if you want. And well, you can partake in the festivities and I'm starting it at, at uh, 415 just so everyone mm -hmm. can be ready and we can all start right at 420 together. Love it. Yeah. So 420 on 420 at 420 central. And lastly, um, the I'm going on a surreality, uh, the surreal shore, which is Erica and Justine, who we were just talking about their combined podcast. Um, I'm going on there. Uh, we're recording tonight. I think oh, it's dropping yes. on Thursday or Friday, like uh, second week of April, April. And we're doing um, Flavor of Love season two, episode one, which Erica, of course, had to remind me because obviously I didn't remember. She's like, you're the, you recommended this episode, Amanda. When I was like, what episode are we doing? But it is the episode where something uh, poops on the floor. Oh, and do you know what the episode is called? Because I'm like, I'm halfway through watching it. It's the episode is titled. <clears throat> something stinking in the house I, I knew it was something like someone dutied it was it's like something very but her name is obvious something, oh. something stinking in the house of flame and don't they they shoot to her just like squatting and like a little you poop. don't see anything it's like a lot of chaos and then um and then I think I, in my memory, I picture them like showing something on the floor, but like super blurred out. Uh -huh. like, but maybe they don't even do that. I think it's just you, you hear commotion. And Flava flames. And then like, everyone's yo, like, oh, who did it on the floor? <laughs> yo, yo, you got to get out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, honey, but you got to go. You got to go. Oh, God. <laughs> or something. Saying. She had a little IBS outbreak. Happens to the best of us. Uh, sure does. Anyways, so, yay. Uh, but what are we. What do you think of this episode of Roseanne? Oh, this is uh, Roseanne. Season six, episode four, Stash from the Past. This is the most highly requested episode by like a landslide. Oh, I was going to say, um, it, isn't the name of their town? La Lan Lanford. Lanford. Wow. Okay, so you were right there. Um, Yeah, this is a classic episode. I remember this. I'm sure I watched it when it aired. I'm sure I've seen it a couple times since. I remember the scene in the bathroom being much longer than it actually was. Yeah, it doesn't start until way late into the episode. I wanted more. Oh, yeah, I could have I could have definitely. Time. Now, when I was uh, taking notes for this, this is right after I dropped off Walter, who was, is he there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh God. Where is there he is. Oh, my God. Okay. got a new collar um I, it was right at, after i dropped him off i drove back to my mom's house and i was like taking notes for this and like it was the perfect thing to watch because i was so stressed out and like i was in the bitchiest mood my mom and ron kept being like how's well is, are, are you nervous are you, are you scared and i was like just don't talk to yeah me. <laughs> yeah i'm get in a zen state of yeah get away from me but then my mom like of course brought me soup and a diet coke with ice in it oh, and oh. poured it out of a glass cup and into a plastic cup because i don't drink out of glass jody really? why it smells like the dishwasher i feel huh i thought maybe this was like a um like you're not allowed to use glass at your mom's house because she because knows I oh amanda <laughs> she's, she's, she's gonna it's gonna break <laughs> she's, a, she's a big klutz that amanda um <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I anyway, this was a perfect thing to watch because it got me in an okay mood at least. And just yeah. I want to discuss what you okay. So Roseanne, when I remember, okay, now Roseanne Barr politics and tweeting on Ambien aside, uh -huh. um, I feel like I when I when people think of Roseanne, I would immediately go to oh she's like a really bad actress like she, like i would i would put her in my mind as like a jerry seinfeld on seinfeld where mm. he's like he's there and he's funny but like he's not a good actor but sure. i feel like every time we watch an episode of roseanne she's doing such solid acting work and i think that it's just that she's so comfortable in the character that yeah. it just seems like she's fucking around but she's not she's like saying lines but it just sounds so natural coming out of her I think, I think she might have been high <laughs> I, I wonder if she did. Like, okay. I don't think she was like, I don't think she was just like in another orbit or anything, but I could see her dabbling. I mean, isn't she like a pretty outspoken weed? Well, she's user? an outspoken, I mean, she's outspoken on many different political views. Uh, oh, often really? at the opposite ends of the spectrum mm, at the same time. So quiet. Remember yeah. well, that national anthem? That's all I can think. I mean, that that was pretty funny. The crotch grab? Yikes so funny people get so mad about that i'm like okay but it's like just a song it's like no yeah <laughs> remember when everyone thought Sinead o'connor was like the antichrist because she ripped up the picture of the pope 
like really it's like she was really making a good point there though yeah over evil rip <laughs> that's why there's I a 30 second delay like, <laughs> uh anyway but yeah i i think that roseanne is just gen genuinely a solid actress and she got really overlooked or maybe she has a bunch of emmys i didn't even look it up but i don't know what do you think yeah. Yeah, I think she's pretty good. I think, I mean, Lori Metcalf is just, she steals the show every time. Well, she then you got John Goodman. Episodes. Yeah, although I don't know how I feel about him ever since he was in that weird show that we watched where it was like, he, he was just rolling the, the words. Oh, just the righteous gemstones. Righteous gem, right? there it was. Yeah, I, I, I don't had remember a hard time anything that. about that. Because he's slimmer, we, he was did older. Did we like it? Oh yeah, slim John Goodman is kind of an off-putting, troubling. I don't like it. Yeah, it's an uncanny. I, I need him to be jolly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like it. Um, no, this is a great episode. And actually, so I went to turn this on, and uh, my guy was here, and I'm like, "Oh, do you want to watch this? It's gonna be really funny. I gotta blast out." um yeah. roseanne and i was like oh it's like it's the classic episode where they get high in the bathroom he's like okay that's so weird he's like i've never seen it but that's weird you said that because the other day what show comes on tv the worst show ever the connors and i guess there's an episode maybe you've seen it where um jackie and dan get high oh no i fell off of the connors Quite okay. Well, is that show still on? I guess so. I mean, he's like, it's uh, it's arguably like the worst show ever made. But he's like, that's so weird that they're like they did it again. That they were, and he's like, they did edibles, Dan and, and Jackie, and they're like, whoa, like you know, as if it's they're having like the worst trip of their lives. Oh my god, the Connors was like, I mean, they were that was like a full pandemic show, and they were one of the shows that decided to go full in on the. Masks and they have and a bunch of stuff too. What? What? Well, like again, Roseanne tweeting. Like, oh, that was another time that she yeah, tweeted stuff, right? Yeah, but I just I think that when um even now we look back at the history of shows that were running during COVID and the ones that made a point to we're not going to address COVID, we're going to pretend it didn't happen, and then there's ones that went full in. Those other ones made the right, <laughs> the yeah. former made the right choice. Yeah. Because it's, it's yeah, I don't upsetting. know how it's still on, but you were into the Connors for a little bit. I wasn't into the Connors ever, but I was really into the even just the reboot of Roseanne. And then when that happened, I decided to keep watching the Connors at least a little bit. But it was just it was a it's a completely different show. Because I, I think a lot of the writers left with Roseanne. I don't know. It's just a bad. Mm. It's a bad, gen, genuinely bad show. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's let's get into this episode. Let's get into it. Let's blast into it. Okay, so I may be looking over this way because I like to work after hours, <laughs> yeah. Amanda. Who doesn't? So I'm always checking my laptop after hours just to make sure, like Check my mouse out. is still Check moving and stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we have Jackie who walks in the back door at Roseanne's. By the way, would hate that. I don't care if you're my child. I don't want you walking in the back yeah. door announced. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, it's, it's a real locked. open door policy over there. Don't like it. So she walks in. She needs Dan to fix her carpet. It's like wrinkling. She needs it retacked down. Didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know like you could retack carpet. But where sure. did you watch this? Um, on Peacock. So did I, but. My episode started at the Lobo. Oh, oh, then you missed the whole scene. Yeah, I guess I did. Because later, in. Jackie brings back a carpet, and I wrote down like, "Oh, I guess they needed a reason for her." Oh, yeah, you just like, like a whole carpet. like. Oh, it's like a probably three to four minute scene. Great, well, Lars, tell me all okay, about it. Mine well, starts at the Lobo. <laughs> okay, Jackie comes in. She needs Dan's help, and Roseanne's like, "Yeah, okay, blah blah blah." But uh, listen. I found um, weed in, in, and she assumes it must be David's. It's like in oh, a little. Oh, this explains so much. Okay. It's in a okay. little container. And she's like, I can't believe he would bring that stuff into the house. And Jackie goes into, oh, this is, oh okay. I'm going to need to see if I can pull it up on my app and play it. Um, Jackie goes into full dare mode, full Jody wannabe prosecutor cop. And she's like, do you know what this is, Roseanne? This is weed. I don't know. Whatever all the different names are. Weed, yeah. marijuana, Mary Jane. <laughs> um, and 
now they're worried, like, how are they going to tell Dan? Like, Dan is already not in a great mood. How are we going to tell him that David brought drugs into the house? He's going to lose it. So just then, Dan comes in. He's in a tizzy, already in a bad mood. And he's like, DJ, get off the roof. And you hear DJ running okay, across so the I roof. I know this scene because I, it always comes up on TikTok. This is like a famous TikTok. Like, it just, this clip oh, is constantly really? coming. Yeah, where he's like, he's running. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that. So on I know what that scene is. Well, what the hell? Okay. Well, you hear like his his footprints, his footsteps running across yeah. the roof. Dan catches him off a roof, like pulls him down. He's just pissed off. And Roseanne's like, "Oh, it's fine. He's on the roof. It's safer than sending him to the park." I thought that was really funny. Sure. Um, so and they just decide this is not the right moment to tell Dan that David's brought drugs into the house. So now we go to the Lobo. Oh, so the way I took all of that, because then after this, Jackie mentions the weed thing. And I had this whole thought in my head. I'm like, I love how canonized this show is. And that this must have <laughs> happened in an earlier episode. And they just trusted the audience to like be like, oh, well, we remember what happened last week. But Roseanne is such a good show. And they do trust the audience enough where I was like, oh, OK, fine. I'll go along with this. <laughs> I it, it must that, have been me. I forgot. Like, you could tell that Roseanne knew about it and that this was something that had been discussed, but I just assumed that maybe last episode ended with that or something. Oh, but it no, still no, worked. No. It worked. All right, so we're at the Lobo. Dan is blue, like Cody Brown. Mm, I'm blue. Yeah. He's down. He's just like, oh, God, you know, worried about work. And he sees this guy, Pete, who works for him. He's at the bar. And now he's like, what the hell? Because Pete called out sick today and he's been calling out sick and he just he, he's got to confront him he's got to tell him and Roseanne's kind of like building him up like no you got to go over there and like you know lay down the law you're the boss tell him he's got to come into work and where was he so Dan goes over to confront Pete who's there with his wife and they're like grossly in love like have you ever seen an actual couple like that giggly not the not at the age that they're at, especially because uh, or, or before Dan goes over there, it's established that Dan is 42 in this episode. What an He says, uh, it's okay to fail when you're 25, but when you fail at 42, that makes you a serious loser. Mm. What's 42? that like? Ooh, it uh, must be really hard. God, it's right, it's I can't right imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, yikes. Uh, so he goes over there kind of confronts Pete and Pete's like, oh God, you got me. And his wife's like, oh, hey, Pete, I'll make sure he's there tomorrow. <laughs> um, and Pete offers to buy Dan and Roseanne a beer to kind of make it up for him. And, and he'll make sure that he's at work tomorrow. So Dan kind of lets him off. He goes back to the table and tells Roseanne and Roseanne's still like, God, what the hell? You got to be tough on this guy. And Dan's like, all right, you know, if he doesn't show up tomorrow or if he shows up hungover, I'm going to lay down the law. And that's just kind of like weird because it doesn't really go anywhere. No, but it must be something that's being established over maybe the season. Okay. All right. So now we're back at the house and Dan is stressed because he doesn't want to have to be a hard ass boss, but he realizes that he has to. Um, and this is when Jackie comes in and she's like, oh, I, I got your comforter back here, Roseanne. And she <laughs> thinks that Dan and Roseanne. For me, this was the first entrance of Jackie. And she's just like, here's your comforter back. And you're like, oh, look at that. All right. Sure. Okay. Uh, Jackie. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. So this was perfect comedic timing. So she goes, uh, Dan, D Dan's like yelling at Roseanne. Uh -huh. like, I don't want to be an asshole. And Jackie goes, right. here's your comforter back. Oh, Dan, relax. It's not like David's the first kid to bring pot into the house. Yeah. And Roseanne goes, Jackie, this is going to be your shortest visit ever. And, um, and then my next line, my next thing is, oh, I guess Roseanne knew about this already. <laughs> I forgot how canonized <laughs> this show is. I yeah. love how they don't spoon feed it to you. And okay, yeah. so now David comes in. <laughs> yeah, Dan calls David down and uh, they're like yelling at him and they're like, oh, David should be killed for the right reason. Why did I write that down? Um, I, I Okay, I don't know. I must have thought it was hilarious at the time. So <laughs> they're like giving David this sweet little like lovable somewhat troubled kid with a heart of gold he's just like this little sweet 
he really is perfect for the show. Like that character is perfectly written. Like the sweet kid who ends up in this kind of rough around the edges family. And he just wants to like, you know, he's so different than the rest of the siblings. It's just sweet. And this um, kid would totally end up with a bitch like Darlene. Too. Yes. That's where all yes. the nice guys end up. Absolutely. Just the whipping boy. Yeah. So Roseanne does the the old adage, you know, with like the frying pan and the egg, but she puts the egg on the table. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, David, this is your brain. She smashes it with the pan. She's like, this is your brain on drugs. So and awesome. honestly, I, I really have to give it to them for like how well this episode, like the web this episode spins, because my brain was going with like, oh, it must be Darlene's. Like, so like you really don't know who it is until like the actual reveal. Is. Yeah, because David's not fighting it. He's not like, oh, my God, it's not mine. Or, you know, like, where'd you find it? He's right. just kind of takes the beating and that he gets up and he leaves and Roseanne's like, see, you like, that's how you handle that kind of stuff. You know, like that's the kind of boss that you should be. And Dan says, well, there's only one problem, Roseanne. This is your pot. And she's like, huh? Um, and then we immediately go to commercial break. Do you think that this was like a whole thing? Like, do you think that this was the first time this was kind of done in... Like, I kind do you think of remember the network it that gave way. them shit for this? Because I remember there was a whole thing when Roseanne kisses... Uh, who did she kiss? Oh, oh, um, oh, God, what is her name? Um, oh, my God. Everyone's screaming it. Shoot. I can find it's it. It's gonna Who come does Roseanne to me. I'm going to Uh Sandra Bernhardt. No, Mariel Hemingway. Oh, oh. Sandra Bernhardt is a lesbian on the show, though. Okay, okay. I think she might be her um, girlfriend. Anyway, but I wonder if this was like a problem where Roseanne's like, no, we're doing an episode where like we smoke pot. Because I don't yeah, remember I ever seeing that before. I kind of remember this episode, and it was controversial that the adults were doing it. Okay, because yeah, it's that still makes in sense. In my mind, as an adult, I'm like, grown ups do drugs. And but then you have to look at the like fact that. that all three of these actors are younger than us. Oh, stop! <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that uh, Jackie must have been like in her like early 30s here or something. Early 30s, you think? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Yeah, I won't even look at it. I up. don't want to know. Um, okay, so now we come back to the next day or something, um, and David is calling Darlene on the phone. I forgot, where is Darlene? She's She goes away to, like, Chicago to college, right? Chicago? Okay. Yeah, I know she's off somewhere, but I didn't remember what it was for. But he calls her, and he's like, uh, hey, just calling to see how you're doing, and Isn't also you left... Here? Yeah, in a phone booth. <laughs> a phone it was booth. actually pretty funny. She's like, where are you calling from? And he's like, um, a phone booth. The guy who lives here, let me use it. <laughs> so yes, yeah. pretty cute. Um, so he calls her and he's like, did you by any chance leave some pot here? I said, like, I, I took the, the yelling for it. And she's like, yeah, no, not mine. So now it's like, okay, well, then who the hell's? hot is this and then we cut to roseanne who's putting on like her old hippie clothing like a leather vest yeah. and some beads and a little flower patch and pins this i feel like is a boho kind of look this is what my, this is what madison and Caleb wearing. yes hippie barefoot an Peace arm bracelet uh, that arm bracelet really <laughs> I think that was, it really think gets me that Madison arm bracelet. Madison wanted to wear the arm bracelet and she's like, boho chic. Oh, the wedding, yeah, the wedding was around the arm bracelet. You know, when they're like, oh, it's plan your wedding like around the venue or around the dress. It was the arm bracelet. The arm bracelet is really going to pump it up a notch. Um, you from, camouflage a, Kayla Brush. Oh, God. There's a there's a little back and forth right after Dan's like, this is your weed. Roseanne's like, well, I think I would have remembered hiding weed in the house, Dan. And he's like, not if you were stoned, you wouldn't. And then David <laughs> comes in and he's like, okay, have you guys thought about my punishment yet? And... um. Roseanne is like, oh wait, uh, Dan's anyway. Dan says we 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 quit smoking pot when you were pregnant with Becky, and she's like, oh, I just thought we couldn't afford it anymore. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, why did David admit to that? David comes in, he says, I'm so. He goes, look, have you thought of my punishment? And they're like, no, we have to think of it st still. And he goes, I'm really sorry. And then Roseanne goes, well, not half as sorry as I am. And David yeah. leaves, and Roseanne goes, it feels good to apologize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um. Well, and then Jackie walks in, right? 
Oh, no, no. Before that, I think you better jump to scene there. Because Dan know, is saying how he fired Pete. And then DJ comes in. He's like, hey, can Billy spend the night? And Roseanne's like, no, he's rude. And I don't like his parents. He goes, can yeah. I spend the night there? And she's like, yeah, sure. Bye. Yeah. That's Which exactly, is so classic. That's that's exactly my parents. I was never allowed to have sleepovers at my house. Oh, I always God, had to go to no. someone else's house. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, and then Roseanne starts like rolling a joint. She's like, we're going to be alone for the night. Yeah. Like, let's smoke this. And Jackie walks in then. She's like, what are you doing? Roseanne. Oh, my God. On the table mom gave you. <laughs> and and you're like, doing it all wrong. <laughs> she, she, yes. Perfect. It's so great. Yeah. So now we go to commercial. We cut back and we're in the bathroom, which I always thought was a huge bathroom. Like, I remember watching that show and being like, it's a smaller-ish so house, but the bathroom's bath. huge. It has two entrances, which is crazy. Well... No, there's two entrances in some bathroom, like a split that's level a, house where you can okay. enter from the hall or the master where it's like a shared. I mean, I guess as long as there's locks on both doors, but that would like make me so nervous at all times. But there's like the, the one step up to the mini hallway just to the bedroom and the bathroom. I just find it weird that a master bathroom would not would also be available to like oh. the rest of the house. I think like the neighborhood I grew up in, there was a, um, oh no, no, it wasn't a split level. It was a, oh no, there's a split level. And there's a raised ranch model that had that. Like the, yeah, I the guess. main bathroom also had a door from the hallway and the master. But yeah, I, I, I always can like picture this pink bathroom with like the flamingo theme. Uh -huh. It is, it's a, it's a nice big bathroom. You can really, really spread your arms out and twirl around in there. Yeah. Oh, totally. Way bigger than my bathrooms. Um, I mean, my backyard does have a tennis court, but it, it definitely does. Um, they, uh, Roseanne's okay. eating a Roseanne's uh, chomping away on a fudge sickle. She uh -huh. goes, "Man, she goes, oh man, because it's so good." And she's like, "This maybe this is how we got fat." Yeah. And um, <laughs> then there's this reveal. They like open the curtain, and Jackie's like curled up in the bathtub, and she's wearing because Dan's going because Dan's like, "Oh my god, Roseanne, I love you. You're the most beautiful." sexy thing i really love oh, you yeah. and they have roseanne she's just like really working this popsicle like uh -huh. just into it just making love to it looking at after he spills his heart and soul out she's like what and then you hear jackie go nobody loves me and like you yeah. don't know she's in there yeah i mean i knew she was in <laughs> so there just great. because this is the cover photo yeah. for everything but it's good right. and she's wearing this like i she she would wear this often with that hideous button-up horse uh, uh -huh. shirt. Oh, we can. Yep. We all know exactly what we're what we're saying. Uh huh. Um, and I just I I'm impressed with everyone's high acting because acting yes high is hard. Acting drunk is hard, but I think acting high is way harder. And I would Dan argue not that... so good at it. Dan was not as good as at the high yeah, acting. I would think that all three of these actors have been high before, but it it's hard. I think that even if I was high performing high, I would not. It would not be convincing. No, because then you're still no. thinking about it. It's it's like it'd it's be very too serious. Difficult. Yeah, I'd be too in my own head. So, but anyway, I was impressed with, especially yeah. Roseanne. I thought Roseanne did a really good. Job. Oh, I thought Lori Metcalf was the best because she's saying she's like nobody loves me. It's just me and my ganja. <laughs> and then yeah. they all bust out laughing. It's hilarious. And then Jackie goes, "Is this the sink? Am I shrinking?" She's in the mm -hmm. bathtub. Uh, and now there's knock, knock, mom, I'm home. And Jackie goes, the jig is up. And she just closes <laughs> the curtain. And they're like, DJ, DJ. Does that sound weird? <laughs> and Roseanne, I feel like this is how I get if I'm feeling a little bit high and like my kids come home or she's like, what did you want, DJ? <gasps> like playing Nicole. <laughs> like, I'm okay. Yeah. Everything is okay. Um. DJ's got like no idea, you know. Yeah, he's looking he for needs, a sleeping he needs a bag. Sleeping bag yeah. And then Roseanne starts getting paranoid. And she's like, Oh my god, I feel like the worst mother ever. I don't even know where my son's going. I don't know what he's doing. Oh my god. Um, and then is it Dan who's like, I, I, I don't think this is working? Or is that Jackie who's eventually like, Yeah, it's I don't Jackie, yeah. And then okay. and the, when Roseanne's like, Oh god, I just want our normal lives back, which is like kind of that is kind of how you feel the very first time you get way too stoned, where you're like, Is it going to be like it's that kid coming? How out long of is this surgery. gonna last? Yeah, is this forever now? Mm -hmm. Is yep. this is this the new is this norm? me now? Is this what life is? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I've just fucked it up and now I'm stuck in this. This yeah. is how I actually expected you to be during our very first 420 episode when you were popping those mints. Well, this is how I expected to be in my entire life, which is why I avoided it for so right. long. And now I'm like, oh, like, oh, it's like, like, like taking a bite thing now. ever. This is better yeah. than drinking. It is better than drinking. So much better. Yeah. Like better for you. You don't feel like gross hungover. You should honestly like. I mean, I know you've never even smoked a cigarette, but like you should try. Yes, I like, have. Oh, you have. But it hurts me. I don't like it. it right. Hurts. But I would like you to just try a pre-roll at some point or just like I, real I do. weed. I have. Oh, re- like stri- not vape, like weed. Yeah. Like- yeah. And it hurts. Oh, it does it, hurt, but it's such a different feeling. I, I love I feel like I don't get as high with it. Like, I feel like I do it and then I, I, it just, it hurts my my breathing Yeah, you get hole. past that. You got to work up the uh, the scar tissue and the cartilage in your throat. But like, if, but don't you like feel it like in your chest and your throat? Um, like burns, I, I, you, like hurts. When I, when I like, I mean, I when I finally started smoking pre like real weed again a couple months ago. Yeah, the first few times, your okay. body, your body, but it can, goes away then. Yeah, your body gets used to it. Is it Probably like a not. Peloton where like the first dozen times you ride, you're like, oh my God, this hurts so bad. And then Yeah, just... I would definitely, I think that that's probably the best comparison is that smoking weed is like <laughs> the same thing. as It's just like that workout high. Peloton. He's yeah. drunk. <laughs> yeah. God. Never. All right. Uh... Um, anyway. Okay. So Jackie's left in the bathroom alone. She's like, guys, I don't think this is working. So now at the end of the episode, right? We have Jackie and Roseanne and Dan, and they're all sitting around the table. And they're this is the only part I don't get. Like they're acting like they are hung over, like they just drank. That is, I don't yeah, know, I know bottles you, of tequila the night before. I don't think you would be. I guess no. There is such thing as like a weed hangover. I guess if they oh, hadn't really? done it forever. However, you feel like it, sick like that. Um, I, I, I've definitely been like weed hungover before, but like, um. Mm. Like the very first few times that I smoked, but I, let's say that they went 12 years without, how old is Becky? Like 12, 13? No, because no, Darlene's like- she's way older. Okay, she's so in her 20s. But oh, I, so I, went, I went like eight years without smoking at all. And like when I first did it, I like it was fine, normal. Okay. So I don't know. It doesn't seem like they would all be this like fucked up. But maybe this amount. is how they were able to get it on like primetime TV where it's like, oh, say uh-huh. no, kids. Yeah, look, show how oh. miserable you are the next day. Mm-hmm. But the, it is a funny joke that, again, that they don't spoon feed to mm. you, but just the whole time David's like looking in the fridge and like uh, uh-huh. he's like talking about like, I would never actually do that. It wasn't my weed. Um, and he's just looking, he's taking out boxes and just like empty, empty Chinese yeah, He's like, listen, boxes. I tried it when I'm younger, but I'm older now. I'm way too mature to be doing such stupid stuff like that now. <laughs> Yeah. And at the very end, he says, there's no eggs left, which is a weird, I feel like they could have punched up that joke, but because they eggs, could have, they're getting well, stoned I, and, and frying up some eggs. At the well, I end. think because she was smashing, like, this is your brain on drugs. Mm, no, I took it more as like munchies because so many things were empty in the fridge. Okay. He kept, he kept taking things out that were empty. Okay. But eggs. Yeah, I mean, I sh- got that too, but then I It seems I like thought... it should be like Oreos or something. Ooh. Like, oh, who ate all the Oreos? I like the vanilla Oreos better than the chocolate ones, by they, the way. You know who has that opinion? The Doughboys. Boys. Uh, and, Boys. and, I mean, if we really want to go into, like, race wars, or color wars, calling back to a Fat Camp episode, one of our best ever, um, vanilla Oreos, look at a double stuff vanilla a mega stuffed or whatever, compare any kind of stuff. The vanilla always has more cream in the middle. Why did you say Take race a double wars stuff? a couple seconds ago? Because white versus... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. It's not me. It's the Oreo people. Yeah. But like, honestly, if you compare Black the two, cookie. two regular stuff, double stuff, mega stuff. Yeah. The I would never, I would never just less. eat an Oreo. What's wrong with you? There were Oreos sitting out. I did buy a, a thing of uh, the golden Oreos like a while yeah, ago. Yeah, those are the best. The vanilla go- golden yeah. ones are the best. I don't crave them, but I'm really into fuzzy peaches lately. Hey, do you, but speaking of Doughboys, did I I don't think I ever told you who won the uh, Munch Madness oh, God. Tournament of Champions. Okay, wait, wait. What was the category? Or the... It was 
Remember how um, a few years ago they did just the McDonald's mem- menu yes. and they did like a bracket and Didn't fried Didn't you make one. me recap that with you? It was like did for my birthday. hours of podcasts. Yeah. Oh, God. And uh, they did that with Taco Bell this uh, Oh, okay. This okay. Night. I sent you that video where Weiger was like, um, and you were like, why is he wearing short shorts? Oh, he has very short shorts and very feminine legs. He does a very, yeah. yeah. And he's kind of like slim. Womanly hips. He's slim, but he's like fat. He's fat slim. He's got got a big ass. Um, These are all things I can easily relate to. But so it was uh, the tournament of champions and a lot happened. The commissioner had to, the commissioner got overthrown by uh, Kowalik. He tried to take over, but then Susser came out at the last minute and like fucking conquered him. This is all during the live show. Okay, so so it comes down to the number one thing on the menu. Yes. Okay, I'm going to guess. Can I guess? Yeah. It's not okay. going to be what you think. Does it include like specialty items, like special seasonal items, or is this strictly? Uh, it has menu? to be, Um, it has to be uh, Taco Bell specific. Mm, seasonal? I, no, I think they, it's seasonal. If it's seasonable, it's reasonable. Yes. I think it can okay. be seasonal. I'm going to go with a chicken grilled stuffed burrito. Mm, no, but it was like the the top ones were like cheesy gordita crunch, Baja mm-hmm. Blast Freeze, which was like no, Mitch, get like, the champion. fuck out. Drinks are not allowed. That's stupid. Drinks are in the sink. No, don't like. And it. Uh, yeah, no, but they that got out of there. I think what I was surprised that the Crunchwrap Supreme didn't win. I feel like that's what everyone liked. But oh, um, but yeah. what ended up winning was like the the double stuffed burrito. Double stuffed, like double Is it a grilled something. Double stuffed. Yeah, I think it's like it's like a burrito, but then it has like a layer of cheese and then like a wrap. Oh around no, it. ew! I don't like that. Beans, I don't like any like doubling it. up, and I don't like a bean burrito. I don't really like Taco Bell to be honest. Certain times, it's got to like you have to really be craving it, and then it At hits. two a.m. when you're drunk. That would be the only time, and there's only one Taco Bell. In- there's more times, babe. Trust. I would have to there's drive up times. like. 40 minutes to get to a Taco Bell. I'd be up by Justine's house and then I'd have to oh, park and then hobble into a mall. Ew. So, yeah. Who An eats Taco Bell in mall. public? Outlet mall. That's the worst no, one. I would never eat You eat Taco it in Bell your in car in the back of a uh, parking oh, lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. At home. <laughs> doors locked. Blinds drawn all the way <laughs> all down. down. <laughs> Extra napkins and paper towels. All the sauces. Akimbo. Um, they used to have a great green, like a verde sauce. Not anymore. Yeah. Big mm. mistake. Anyway, I could talk about Taco Bell forever. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I'm Our really hungry. Just went all the way up. Yeah. Um, real upset. So what, what do we have next week? I don't. I should have uploaded. Oh, our I can poster, pull that right up in a moment. It's like here. Fraser or something. And then we're going to end with um with an ad from our one of our lovely sister podcasts. So we'll set that up. Yeah. Oh, oh, like the best. Okay, I'm I'm just like scrolling back here till I can find our our, our little nifty gifty image. Um, so we have oh we are going to be doing the facts of life, which is uh, not life goes on. Dope. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no patty. No yeah, it's season time. one, episode 13, Dope. We have an episode of Schrager, Shrej- Fraser, season 11, it. episode 11, High Holidays. And then a banger, Dragnet, season two, episode eight. <laughs> I'm actually really excited about Dragnet. Uh, before we leave, um, remember to uh, check out both of our Patreons and uh, get our link for our fourth annual 420 live um and then you can always watch it on the rewatch but you'll also need the link there too no freebies on this 420 no 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 um but before we leave um we're we did a little ad swappy with one of our favorite gals Kim- well you you like i feel like she was your friend Kimberly first early from yeah. a date with dateline if you don't subscribe they have great patreons too um, they do like reality TV series, Amazing Race. They always do that. Um, they've done 90 Day Fiance once too before, but it's um, Katie and Kimberly and they always have on guests. They're the best. If you listen to Dateline, you're going to listen to Dateline, listen, or I guess watch Dateline. You're going to love them. They're just the best. And Kimberly's come on like our lives. So many times. Too. Yeah. yeah. When you took, when you had to take time off last year for something, um, she, I had a, a few weeks of guests and she came on and she did a, 
very solid uh, sister wise recap with me. Oh, the sweet. And she's so. yeah, she's on all of our extravaganzas. So check her out. Um, Jody. So I'm gonna like let this ad play out. Um, yep. once uh, let's just take ourselves out of the stream. You know what I mean? Like remove it, oh, and then okay. I'll just let it right. All right, I'm just gonna duck down under my desk and. <laughs> This is a public service announcement brought to you by the podcast, A Date with Dateline. How to get away with not getting murdered and winding up on Dateline. Kimberly, what's first? First and foremost, Katie, don't let your smile light up a room. If your laugh can be described as contagious, rein that in. Be wary of potential lovers you may meet on the internet, especially those whose deceased spouses came from money and died mysteriously. Keep a sharp eye out for extramarital geometry. The most dangerous kind of triangles are love triangles. Remember, nothing good ever happens at the bottom of the stairs or in the bathtub. If your husband or wife asks you to go on a spontaneous hike to an unknown location, just say no. And finally, when it comes to life insurance, deny, deny, deny. You don't have any, you're worth nothing. Please subscribe to a Date with Dateline podcasts, wherever fine, informative podcasts are found for more tips on how to not wind up on Dateline. I'm Josh Mankiewicz, and I approve this message. 